Ubisoft invited me to play their closed beta test of Skull and Bones. And so I got to play four hours and I'm gonna share pretty much everything I think about it with you guys here. This has always been a game on my radar because coming off of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which is already 10 years old, by the way, I wanted a dedicated pirate game outside of Assassin's Creed. And that's what Skull and Bones is supposed to be. So before we jump in, the closed beta is going on right now. So click the link below to learn how you can play it yourself. And also thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video and letting me play this early. I think more than almost any game out there, Skull and Bones needs a little context before you talk about it because this thing was announced forever ago. We've seen it in various different stages. I actually played Skull and Bones at E3 2018, if you can believe it or not. We know it originated the idea as a Black Flag DLC and then it got spun off into its own sort of live service separate game in Skull and Bones. Last year around E3 when Ubisoft did their thing, they showed off gameplay and I was pretty vocally like critical of this. You know, I was just like, this looks like a mobile game. The font looks terrible. The UI is messy. So to be completely honest, I came into this with low expectations. I just wasn't impressed by what they showed us last year. Now they've had one full year to make this game better, to polish it, to iterate on it, and you know, get this closer to what it will be on launch. Before I played, I got to watch this video where they talked about how they invited like either 200 or 2000 creators and just Ubisoft fans to play skull and bones in their alpha phase and give feedback and the biggest thing they listened to and added is a narrative this game wasn't really the best to be played solo now it's something that you can enjoy it by yourself if that's how you want to play it so going in my question obviously was is this better does this play better than that gameplay that i thought didn't look very good and the answer at least for me is yes and no um, I think the first thing that was very striking to me was the graphics. It's a pretty game, very much like every modern Ubisoft game. If you look at the environment, if you look at some of the very up close textures and the way the water moves during, you know, combat, there's some pretty stuff going on here. I think graphically it's very pleasing to look at. And if you're going to play this on a big TV, yeah, I think it's going to be that spectacle kind of thing. You're going to be like, wow, you know, this is a pirate game. I think it definitely succeeds at that. I've especially enjoyed the way you can swap positions so you can stay in sort of the standard, you know, third person view, if you will, and then you can go back to your first person and watch your guy, you know, uh, spin the wheel, look at your crew, look at your monkey. You get a lemur pretty early on in the game, but you can also go to the cockpit if you want to use that to use your spyglass and kind of look around. So that sort of experience is, is fun. At the same time, these faces, they don't look very good. There's a lot of people talking, and I guess that's because of the feedback with the narrative and so on and so forth. But these, very similar to what I thought about Far Cry 6's characters, they just look like Play-Doh people. They don't really convince you that they are actual characters, you know, that have motivations and exist in any real sense. They just feel like ambient quest givers that are talking at you and I actually had to write down one of these lines of dialogue that just kind of threw me for a loop. Ever kill a person with a knife? I was talking to another trader and she just all of a sudden says this. I miss cake. In the grand scheme of things, does this matter? No, not really. But I think if you're trying to like convince a player, if you're trying to immerse them in like a piratey world, I'm not sure if this tone works. And look, they initially didn't plan for this much narrative or probably this many NPCs even talking to you. I'd imagine they're banking on the fact that Skull and Bones is gonna be mostly a game that you hop on and play with friends or just in a very like multiplayer sense where you're trying to interact with people and form groups or maybe just attack people on the open seas. You're not spending all this time talking to these people, so it really doesn't matter. But the problem is you kind of are. Your exposure to these NPCs is, I mean, at least in my time, pretty constant. I was going up to these people trying to find the blueprint that I needed to upgrade my ship's weapons and doing different tasks and missions for them. The presentation here, I think, matters, and I don't think it's at a very good state right now. I think they need to spend more time on it. Let's talk about the story. What are you actually doing in this game since they did add that after community feedback? In the very beginning, you have this epic fight against the British in a massive ship, and honestly, this moment, I was like, oh my god, this game is incredible. 
And unfortunately, it never really got back to that much of a high. I guess that's them trying to dangle the carrot and show what you eventually can do. Anyways, we'll talk about this later. But you end up losing the fight, shipwrecked, and then you find your way to this pirate island ruled by a pirate named John Skurlock, and he's sort of the kingpin. So if you follow the main path, you're basically just running errands for him and proving your worth as a pirate and, you know, building your infamy, which is the progression system. And there's like a couple ranks within each title. And when you hit the next like milestone and become, let's say, a brigand instead of a rover, then you unlock a ton of different stuff like a new ship, new cosmetics, uh, new blueprints for you to build. As your infamy progresses, that'll unlock new blueprints, which is just better versions of what you already have. And in order to craft that stuff, you need resources. Now, there's a couple ways of getting resources, but pretty much everything you do in the game gives you resources. You can go out on your own and manually collect them via these mini games. You can discover trade routes as you're sailing around and then look carefully to see which boats are carrying what and then sink the ones that you need that have the resources. And you can just complete main quests and side quests because these quest givers will give you the resources that you need to upgrade as a reward. Generally speaking, I think this system works Works just fine. Uh, one thing I did, however, waste a lot of time on was trying to manually go out and get resources and then try to refine them. I think the best way to get resources in this game is to just do quests because they give you some pretty advanced stuff and you get infamy from those quests. So it just kind of makes sense rather than wandering off on your own to collect resources manually. Speaking of, this is another gripe I have with the presentation, and I don't know what the choice is here, maybe a lack of resources, or they just thought it would be too tedious to do this, but the little mini games they've created here to collect resources, I don't know about these. For example, I'm trying to collect this resource that's on the coast here. This is what it looks like to collect a resource. This is something that I noticed in the 2022 gameplay reveal during their E3 presentation and wondered why. Like, what's what? why are we doing this minigame instead of having something a little more hands-on, or at least from a presentation standpoint, something with better animation, you know what I mean? I get it, this is just resource gathering, right? Like, it's not that important. At the same time, why can't I see my crew go out there and sort of cut it down and bring it back with me? Why can't I hop out myself with a pickaxe and go mine a piece of ore and then hop back on the ship? In the presentation I saw before playing the closed beta, they actually mentioned immersion and pointed to the UI and said, you can hide a lot of the UI elements for immersion, but just be wary, you need a lot of them in order to actually play the game, which I tried myself and found that to be true. But there's really nothing more immersion breaking than this, you know what I mean? Than this kind of resource gathering. So I don't know, man. I just think from a presentation standpoint, there needs to be better animations in this game to actually keep me in the experience. This brings me to one of the first things I wrote down on my notes while playing, which is you can't transition from your boat to the shoreline. You get this tiny little animation, it cuts to black, and then your character walks into frame. That right there feels like there should just be an animation there. Like it feels a little stilted, the fact that they don't have that. Same thing goes when you decide to board a ship in combat. When you bring their health down, you have the option, similar to Black Flag, where you get more resources if you have your crew board the ship. But it's just your crew boarding the ship because when you initiate that you watch an animation and then you get the rewards and that's it like you don't manually get to swing over like you could in black flag you know shoot some guys with your pirate pistols and your cutlass and slash them down and you know shoot some tnt barrels all that cool stuff you could do in black flag it doesn't exist in this game i mean at least it would be cool since this game already has mini games to have a mini game of your crew like throwing spears over that have ropes on them or you know those hook guns that were in black flag like shoot those over in order to attach your ship you know just something a little bit more because rolling up to another ship clicking a button and then automatically gaining all the rewards and then that's it? I don't know. This just wasn't satisfying for me. And I watched the same animation because it's the same every time about 30 times. So of course, towards the end of, the, of my time with the beta, I started skipping it. So 
I just think there could be something much better here. There's another mechanic in this game where I expected, you know, a bit better presentation, and that's the plundering. So there are certain outposts around the map that have resources, and each uh, outpost is ruled by a faction, so you might do it for that reason for a quest. But when you initiate a plunder of an outpost, you see a cutscene of your, you know, crew getting off the boat and rushing, but you gotta stay behind in the ship, and you have to defend the waters around it, and once you defend the waters, you get the rewards at the end, right? And then you get to see your crew come back with all of their rewards from this outpost. But again, you were stuck on the ship. So I think there's definitely a conversation and a concession to be had saying, look, this is a ship-focused pirate game. There's not really anything wrong with that, and if that's what you go in expecting, then I think you're gonna like this. But if you had the wrong expectations, which would be that you're gonna be able to do some of this stuff yourself, and that's gonna make you feel like a pirate, maybe like Black Flag did, then I think it's a bit disappointing to see that that's not in this game. And hey, I'll be the first to admit, I don't think that's a fair expectation to look at Skull and Bones and say, why is this not like Black Flag? Because they're just different games. Ever since it became its own thing, that's, I think, a different expectation. We've been a little negative for a while, constructively, I hope, but let's go to some positive feedback, which to me is the ship combat itself, I think is really fun and engaging. If you thought Black Flag was fun in terms of just getting into fights and seeing if you can survive, minus the whole crew boarding thing that I talked about before, like literally just using your weapons on your ship, I think there's a lot of fun to be had with Skull and Bones, particularly with how many different types of weapons there are and how you can basically craft a ship load out from a dock and move those weapons around. There's lots of different ship types with different archetypes. And during the moment to moment, I felt myself getting better by the very end. I'm showing you guys my very last fight here where I'm kind of switching between my weapons and using my ship in the way I'm sort of turning in order to get the most out of each weapon and shoot it as much as possible while they're reloading. That feeling of navigating the ocean and sort of juggling several ships coming at you at the same time is fun, and I think it's a marked improvement over Black Flag itself. So if ship combat is like your jam, and that's really what you're looking forward to doing the most in Skull and Bones, I think it's a pretty safe bet here that you're gonna enjoy that. Let's move over to what on foot gameplay is like. Now, like I said, you can't hop out of your ship wherever and do the Black Flag thing, but you are on foot to talk to NPCs, to accept quests, and also there's some very, very, very light exploration on foot. Like there's a buff you can find where you like throw some powder on this thing and boom, you've got extra stamina regen for 30 minutes. I had one treasure chest where I used a compass, which literally just pointed my like camera towards where the treasure is gonna be. And I just had to keep doing that until I found it. I'm guessing the main purpose of this is to sort of be a vehicle for, you know, accepting quests and also for you to see your cosmetics because there is a store where you can spend in-game currency in order to buy various hats and jackets and all kinds of stuff like that. I assume this is also a major component of multiplayer and like finding people to do stuff with. If you don't have buddies that play this game, but you still want to play multiplayer, there's random real people walking around. I had them during the closed beta test. I assume other, you know, creators. But what I also spent my time doing on foot is going from vendor to vendor in order to take a resource and maybe refine it into a better resource and then bring that to another vendor and have them craft something for me. There's a lot of that going on, a lot of menu management, I would say, or I need to find this blueprint in order to craft this thing to unlock this other thing. Now, a lot of games do this, so I'm not here to just slam Skull and Bones because it functions like this, but this to me was a little disappointing. I just wish there was less of this kind of gameplay. And I really think a lot of the running around from vendor to vendor and turning in my resources to craft something could have been solved by just having one single vendor, like a harbor master, and then I pull in with my ship, I very briefly talk to this guy, I buy the upgrades that I want, 
and then I'm back out on the waters where it's actually fun. You know what I mean? But again, I think this is a preference thing. Some of you will see this and play through it and think nothing of it. It might feel normal to you. It is a sticking point for me, and I just wish it was a little more streamlined. This also extends to the cargo system. So your ship has a certain like hole size, a certain amount of cargo that you can carry, which makes sense, right? And once you hit a certain point, you just need to go back and drop off your stuff. But there is a lot of resources in this game. And if you're doing quests and like being really efficient and getting a lot of things, then you just got a lot of stuff in your cargo, in your inventory, in your warehouse that you're constantly having to move around and sort through and I don't know, it's just like a lot of clutter to me. It reminds me of how a Bethesda game can get because there's so many different items out there that you suddenly hit this point where you're like, is this even fun having to move items from one container to another to manage my resources? I don't know. Again, totally a personal preference thing. You might hear that, you might see that and think that's how every game is. And I get that for sure. But it's something that I noticed and I wish there was just less of that going on in this game. Back to the positives. I think there's some really cool like facts action based interactions in this game so around the first island there's only I actually I think there's three factions there's the sea people and the clan of Farah, and then there's also the Compagnie and in the beginning it's kind of like you and John Skurlock versus the Compagnie and then eventually you need to I think choose a side between sea people and clan of Farah or you can just attack them both and sort of like play everyone. It's fun to have this cause and effect where your actions sort of, they seem to have an effect on the world. And I think that was a good implementation, at least what I played in the beta. And then they also talked about the system by which you can manipulate the market. And I don't know how in depth that will actually go, but essentially this is how it works from my gameplay. You can go to one vendor and in their stock, you'll see some green down arrows or some red up arrows. And that signals to you you like, hey, this person is selling this for over its value or way under its value. Basically, it's buy low, sell high. Just look for the green arrows, buy the things that are green arrows and sell the things that are green arrows. For example, in my gameplay, I found these rare ornate pistols. I bought them when they were super low and then I sold them to someone on the very same island that wanted to buy them for way more than I paid to, to buy them. So I made a profit there. Is that truly like air quotes, you know, manipulating the market? I don't know about that, but maybe there are some systems down the line where you can set up trade routes and, you know, sell things for a profit. I don't know. But yeah, that was a small little thing that I found myself enjoying. There was also, I think, plenty of content in this beta that I did not check out. For example, I didn't do a lot of the side quests. Again, that's a regret that I have with my experience. I was trying to get materials, you know, manually instead of just doing quests, which give you much better rewards. There was also a bounty mission, which I found was too difficult for me. There was a world event where I was supposed to attack this convoy and I just got absolutely obliterated. I tried to call for help, but by the time they got there, I was already dead. After a certain rain, there was a like sea monster event that showed up again I didn't play enough in order to experience that for myself and there's some sort of ghost ship event that I didn't do so there's still plenty of stuff that I didn't do in this beta that might have you know colored in the fun uh, definitely leans into more of the pirate lore and fantasy stuff but yeah to sort of bring my thoughts to a close a mixed bag I think there were things I liked I genuinely really liked and some things that I didn't like and really felt like hey this needs to be addressed particularly the presentation stuff. But I hope this was helpful for you guys to get an in-depth look. Of course, you can play it yourself. The game is in closed beta right now, and you can visit the link in the description to sign up and play it and make your own opinion. But one final note before I let you guys go. Easily, the best part of this closed beta was the opening sequence where I was fighting the British, where there was no UI. It was literally just me stuck in the fight, fighting for my life against all of these ships in this beautiful landscape with no, you know, missions on my screen, no other distractions. And that sort of immersive experience, like if I'm gonna really get into Skull and Bones, I need more of that. Like just give me more of that because that was an absolute vibe. Maybe later in the game, it will feel like that. Maybe there will be a pirate hideout that you can, you know, customize and, you know, make your own. That's stuff that I think would really draw me into Skull and Bones. But for now, that's all I've got. So first off, thank you to Ubisoft for giving me this opportunity and for sponsoring the video. I'm glad that they trusted me, you know, to actually give us a fair shake since I really was pretty verbally uh, critical of this in the past. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
video. If you did, remember to hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this and hit the bell so you don't miss my next one. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll talk to you next time.